Wait, am I seeing this correctly? This player just called me with what? I mean, there is absolutely no way that he just called me with that. After that hand, I'm not gonna lie. I looked at this guy totally differently for the rest of the night. I mean, in order for him to call me down with a hand like that, he had to have something personal against me. Because I can't think of any other reason why he would call me down with such a garbage hand like that. So obviously, things weren't going my way up to this point in the night. But guess what guys, things haven't really been going as planned in real life either. For those of you that don't already know, there is a tornado where I live in Houston, Texas that knocked the power out of my house for nearly a week. I'm going to briefly show you guys what it looked like in Houston after the tornado and then we'll get straight into the poker hands from this session. It's a tornado. Oh shit. God damn. Oh. Oh, that's gonna piss me off if that scratch my truck. Okay, so there were obviously worse parts of the city. I'm just showing you guys what I recorded with my own phone. So as you guys can see, there's trees knocked down everywhere and even whole gas station covers knocked all the way over. Damn! God damn. My bro called me during all of this madness when his call finally got through because we had cellular towers knocked down as well. So there was little to no service in my area also. But when his call finally did go through, he told me to come get him because he was trapped in his house. Now honestly, I thought he was exaggerating until I actually got to his neighborhood and realized that I couldn't even get on his street because there was so many trees knocked over. I need to get right there, Jack House right there. Damn, I got Fuck. What the fuck do I keep like that way? I then finally got to his house and it looked like this. Well guys, I'm just glad that myself and all of my family is safe. I hope that all of my subscribers that live in the Houston area are okay as well. Times like this should really put into perspective how truly blessed we all are. And also how many of the little things that we often take for granted every day like myself being able to make YouTube videos for you guys entertainment, or even you guys having the ability to watch me via TVs or smartphones. All of these are privileges and blessings that we take for granted that truly become crystal clear during times like this. But now, thankfully, I have power and my home is finally back in order, so I can go back to making silly YouTube videos for you guys. Now let's get into the poker hands. He needs a king, you know, so so there's there's a bunch of different draws. Like I said, each side is associated with 50% of the pot. Okay. And so, a seven, and then there's a six. Okay? So. Ha <laughs> ha! We're back at the hangar. And what better way to make us feel better than going back to the hangar to collect some of that free money that the players give away there? Now, what you guys are watching right now is truly an amazing sight to see. You guys are watching the employee of the century, Todd, teach players how to play poker before we start playing. I mean, I can't make this up. I called him the employee of the century because this man is literally doing God's work by teaching players how to play poker before the game starts. Now, all of my real poker players know that this is truly a beautiful sight to see when you walk inside of a poker room because at least I have the comfort in knowing that everyone who is a part of this lesson is a worse player than I am. <laughs> so this is a good site to walk into. Okay, now to be fair, Todd was teaching them about double board bomb pots. But still, a poker lesson is a poker lesson. And I need to hurry up and buy chips so I can play with whoever was a part of that lesson as soon as possible. <laughs> To do that here. Yeah. Hey, Roseanne, you got any money for me tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> See, 
There's no rules against playing Facebook. She doesn't charge the same ATM. <laughs> Now, how ironic is it that our first interesting hand of the night is a double board bomb pot? Now, let's hope Todd didn't teach them too well. There's currently eight players at the table. We've all put in $5. Now, let's see two flops. Okay. That's me. That's me, too. Yep, I flopped trip aces on the top and a pair of sevens on the bottom and I decided to bet $15 on this flop as a little pot builder for future streets. Three players make the call, and we're headed four ways to the turn. Uh, check. 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 Now neither turn improved my hand, so when the turn is checked to me, I decided to check and not bloat this pot any further. I realize that Todd is at the table when it gets to him and he bets $30. Wait, someone called the floor. Is he allowed to teach us how to play and then immediately take our money? I laugh when he makes the bet because I know I'm behind him on one board and maybe both. But he made it cheap, so I don't really have the price to fold. So I call along with one other player and we head to the river three ways. Oh, it's so cheap. <laughs> Todd is a rat. Let me put this in my notes. <laughs> Todd is a rat. You have notes too? Oh, Everybody yeah. has notes. Oh, I, I got big notes right here. <laughs> <laughs> I got a notebook. Now, before you smart Alex hop in my comment section about the notes, the OGs of the channel know that I'm just joking and I only take notes for the vlog. <laughs> I don't take notes for playing purposes. But the river on the top is the ten of hearts. So I river the second nuts and I only lose to ace jack up top. And although I only have a pair of sevens on the bottom, I want to put max pressure on these players and try to take the pot all by myself by getting them to fold. If someone woke up with ace jack, then good for them. Here, take my money. Right. I bet the pot for $190 and now Todd is in the tank. Let's see what happens. Okay. You're not good at this game, Todd. I don't want to see your good fold. I don't want to see your good fold. I'm not good at this game either. Alright, so here's what's going to happen. Look how good I am. Look who I'm on the top. And he's got the bottom. Yeah, he's got a pair of seven. I want somebody else to sit there so they can have Jackson call. He's going to win it all. He's going to win it all. He's going to win it all. So as you guys saw, Todd made the pro fold and folded a smaller boat on the top and the other player called for her last $30 and we scooped this pot when she showed an ace on the top and only a pair of sixes on the bottom. This was Todd's last hand because I'm so good at poker and I made him nervous. <laughs> no, in all seriousness, Sometimes, here at the hangar, the staff sits down to start the game until more players come in. And now that more players are starting to come in, it's time for this poker pro to get up and let us amateurs battle it out. Now look, I know that I called Todd the employee of the century earlier for his amazing teaching skills. But he really works at the hangar for fun, not for funds. He's actually a high stakes poker player who plays in games way bigger than I do as of right now. So if any of you know Todd and you watch my channel, it would make my day if the next time you see Todd, you tell him how absolutely amazing he is at poker. Matter of fact, text him or call him if you have his number and tell him that Valdez said that he's an unbelievably great poker player. <laughs> Let's get to the next hand. Okay guys, so I just got home from the gym and I wanted to let you guys know that my first online meetup game will be this Friday at 8 p.m. Central on Poker Bros. 
This game will be nuts. I'm turning on the seven dudes game, and we're doing double board bomb pots every 10 hands. I'm also going to be talking shit all night in the voice chat, so I hope you guys are ready. If you guys haven't already, make sure you download the Poker Bros app using the link in my description. That link will automatically place you in both of the clubs that I play in. I want to give a shout out to all 65 of you who have already downloaded the Poker Bros app using my referral code. Thank you guys. It's been fun playing with you guys every day. <laughs> Let's see. Shout out to Ren to Fold. You're a crusher, bro. And you're way better than me at poker. Let's see. Who else? Shout out GT Mikey. Shout out GT Mikey for this cooler. I'm putting this on the screen. Look at this cooler. I hope you're at the meetup game this Friday, bro, because I need my get back. He stacked me and took my money. Shout out to GT Mikey. Look, guys, this is a private game, so make sure you've joined my Discord so you can have the code to get into the game. Also, make sure you've joined Suited Up's Discord, and they'll help you get loaded up, and they'll also help you with any other questions that you may have. All of the links to Poker Bros and the Discords are in my description. I'll see you guys Friday, and get there early because I'm only playing one table this week. I'm not an online poker pro that can multi-table yet. It's just one table. Okay, guys, back to the poker hands. In the next hand, I look down at Ace King off in late position and I raise it up to $30. Two players make the call and we're headed three ways to the flop. Hello? The flop comes ace, nine, six, rainbow. And when it's checked to me, I decide to bet around one thirds of the pot for $35. Now there's not too many draws on this board. So I'm only really targeting hands like smaller aces and non-believing nines. I'm also protecting my range for the times when the flop comes ace high and I have a hand like queen jack suited. I'm trying to stay balanced as the poker nerds would say. Well, one player makes the call and we're headed to the turn. Now this player was the loosest player at the table and he hasn't seen a hand he didn't like all night. Let's see a turn card heads up. The turn is the six of clubs, so my hand improves the two pair with a king kicker. Now I don't mind this turn card at all. So when my opponent checks it over to me again, I decide to bet small for $55. He makes the call, now let's see the river. The river comes to deuce of spades and my opponent leads on this river for $135. Now I don't love the fact that he led into me on this river, but this is a no question mandatory call given the context on who I'm up against. Let's get a count. Make the call and see what he has. Nolan, I asked how much is it? Can you please close your mouth and count the man's chips, please? Damn! And I don't like the fact that he's counting his own chips either. That's super strong to me. But I've been watching him play all night. So I'm never folding this hand in this spot. Let's get a count, call it off, and see what he has. Looks like 135. <coughs> Jack six offsuit. Did I just lose nearly a $600 pot to Jack six offsuit? If this is a part of the game, then I guess I just have to take it how the pros take it. I said I wasn't going to be all over the internet whining and raging all of the time. So this is where I draw the line. I'm going to take this loss like a good sport. Now let's get to the next hand. Next hand my ass, unless one of you guys in the comment section is going to give me my $300 back, then I'm going to rage how I want to rage. This is some bullshit, and my YouTube channel is my therapy. I did well enough not showing emotion in person. 
But now that I'm in my bedroom making a YouTube video. Next hand. In the next interesting hand of the night, we have the reverse button Omaha hand and look down at Pocky Kings with King High Spades and the Ace and we limp the $6 straddle. The straddle gets limped all the way around to the button and he raises it up to $50. Now this is the same player who beat us in the last hand, so there's no telling what four cards he has. But I make the call, as well as one other player, and we go three ways to the flop. Check. The flop comes Jack 10 4 with two spades. So I flop an over pair, the second nut flush draw, and a gutter to the straight. When I check it over to the cutoff, he decides to bet $20 on this flop. Our best friend on the button then decides to raise it up to $75. I thought a call in this spot was fine, so I called, the cutoff folded, and we're headed heads up to the turn. Now the turn is literally the best card in the deck, because I turn the nut flush when the ace of spades peels off. Now I'm first to act and I'm heads up with a very aggressive, loose player. I consider checking, but this is Omaha, and I can't let this guy see a free river card. Or actually, I could let him blast off, because some of the time, he's gonna bet on this turn as well. I eventually decide to not get cute and bet, so I bet $130. <laughs> Watch your mouth, Chip. He unfortunately made the fold pretty quickly, and we took this pot down. No more action on this hand. That sucks. Next hand. I said, yeah, you're just, you're yelling. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> my, my. In the next hand, I look down at Jack Nine off in middle position, and I left the $6 button straddle. Now, yes. I know that this is a bad call. If I'm going to play this hand out of middle position, I'm sure the occasional raise is best if I'm going to play it. But at the time, I hadn't been able to get much going on this night, so I limped the $6 straddle. It gets to the button and he bumps it up to $20. See this is another problem with playing a hand like this out of middle position. Because when the button raises it to $20, I mean, I could fold, but of course I'm not, because I already have $6 in there. So I ended up going three ways to the flop, first to act for $20 with a hand that I was supposed to fold pre-flop. You see how small mistakes can just compound? Let's see a flop. Shit. The flop comes Jack 7-4 Rainbow, and I'm first to act. It gets checked to the button and he bets $60. See, this is yet another reason why playing a hand like this is bad, especially out of position. Because when the button C bets for $60, I mean, I can't really fold to one bet. I mean, I flop top pair. What better flops was I expecting to see when I called with this hand pre-flop? I have to protect my range from hands like Ace King and Ace Queen who bricked this flop. So I decided to call to $60, but there's going to be so many turn cards that I don't want to see. I mean, I don't want to see an ace, a queen, or a king, and hell, I can already be dominated by a hand like ace jack, and he could also have an overpair, but I think this player would have raised an overpair a little bit more than $20 preflop, but I end up making a call, and so does my good friend Carl in the cutoff, and we go three ways to the turn. Time to get the beans above the so as you guys saw the turn card was the queen of clubs 
which is one of the many turn cards that I did not want to see. So when the button bet $100, I folded. And I don't know what that spasm was I did with my hand, but I know that I did it out of frustration because I know that I was supposed to fold that hand pre-flop. But instead, I called and put myself in a bad position and wasted $80. Just think about it. I'd still be $80 richer to this day if I would have just folded that hand pre-flop. Those small mistakes definitely add up. Let's get to the next hand. Hey YouTube, I know this is random, but I just met Brew Poker yesterday at the gym, and he's a fellow poker vlogger in the area. We were talking about the monetization process on YouTube, and he informed me that he wasn't quite monetized yet. Now if I could snap my fingers and get him monetized, then I would. But that's not how YouTube works. So I need you guys help to go show his channel some love. I'd really appreciate it. And no, he did not ask me to post him. Thanks again. <laughs> Next hand, and I look down at pocket sevens and a hijack, and I bump it up to $20. Four players call, so we're headed to the flop five ways. Legendary hand. Five players. Beep. The flop comes 976 with two clubs. So I flop a set and I might finally be able to get some momentum going on this night. It gets checked to me and I see bet on this flop for $55. Now this was a very draw heavy board, so I wanted to see bet on the larger side to charge those draws the max. Both Graciel and Carl to my left make the call and we head to the turn. Let's see. I don't want to see an eight or a club. No eight, no club. Look at this. Six or seven dollars. Why don't you verify it? That's all I want you to do. Verify it. Oh, no. You kidding me. Ah, I see the joke. The Eight of Club comes on the turn. Probably the worst card in the deck for my hand. I see it's going to continue to be one of those nights, huh? Well, this turn card is an easy check. All of the straights and all of the flushes got there. So let's just check it to them and see what they do. And it's like it is a really wet board. It's like wet, and I'm just like, kind of like that one earlier. You don't know what wet is. We're having a conversation. Poker shorts. Keep going. Keep going. I love poker shorts. So I just yeah. It's just like... Carl bets $180 dollars on this turn card. And because I lose to everything, any 5 beats me, any 10 beats me, all of the flushes beat me. I mean, I do have 10 outs at best, assuming some of my outs aren't dead already. But I know I'm behind right now. And I don't have the price to chase and try to catch up. In the long run, the call would be a losing call. So even if I were to call and the board pairs up and I boat up, it would still be a bad call. Even though I'm not playing my best today... There's no need to call this turn card for $180 chasing when I'm only $75 invested into this hand. Graciel folds as well, and Carl takes this one down. I rabbit hunt the river, and it was the king of spades, a total brick. But like I said, even if I would have rabbit hunted the river and it paired the board, I still think that that was a good fold on the turn. Now let's get to the last interesting hand of the night. This was a big hand. Okay, now this was the last interesting hand of the night. It's 1 a.m. and the game is really starting to loosen up. Of course, I still can't hit shit up to this point, but in this hand, I look down at pocket aces in middle position and I limp because the last 10 hands in a row had been raised. Argue with your mommy. I wanted to limp. Anyway, it gets to the cutoff, who was by far the tightest player at the table, and he raised to $30. Now, he hadn't really raised all night, so I knew that he had a pretty good hand. I just didn't know how good. So when under the gun to my right called the $30, I decided to re-raise to $125. Now, let's see what the cutoff does. Oh, yeah, I, know, I know what you're saying. Yes. I know what you're saying. Then you bet $20. Why the hell am I falling for 
Oh boy, we're narrowing his range down now. I mean, it was already narrow when I saw him raise $30 preflop. This player was tight. And here I am getting min clicked by the tightest player at the table to $250 and I have pocket aces? What a spot. Now in this spot, with the best starting hand in poker, I consider flatting the $250 to disguise my hand, but I'm out of position and he's not the type of player to make too many mistakes post flop. So I wanted to get him to invest as much money as I can get him to invest while he was behind. Now guys, normally in a spot like this, I would be excited, but I was almost certain he had the other two aces. Either he had the other two aces in the deck or I got lucky by him having pocket kings in this spot. For this player, those two hands were the only two possibilities in this spot. I'm sure he flats the $125 with anything worse. So I end up re-raising again to $500. Now let's see what he does. Tell him to build an upstairs so you can move upstairs and you don't have to... Look at those prize picks. Huh? Look at those prize picks. No. I don't bet anymore. Oh, they do WNBA? Oh, I'm a fit. And it's not badness. Like, you know, it's player stats. Yeah, I know. That is what it is. Brady, I'm pretty sure it's still betting. I'm saying it's not. I know. It didn't shoot you. Who's with him? A lot of times they do, like, save your bet. Well, now that I have one of, now, now that one of my friends. Okay, so he ended up just calling the $500. So he most likely has pocket kings. I'm sure he jams here most of the time with aces. Let's see a clean flop. Okay, so the flop comes ace, nine, deuce, all hearts. And now I'm absolutely positive that I have the best hand because there's an ace on the board. So now I know that my opponent has pocket kings. But I just don't know if he has pocket kings with a heart in his hand or not. Damn, I wish I knew. What would you guys do in this spot? Check or bet? Put it in the comment section. He has just over $900 in his stack. And he's not the type of player to just jam the rest of his chips in because he's quote unquote invested. So I have to be smart here and make the best decision I can with the information that I have as of right now. I know he has pocket kings. I just don't know if he has the king of hearts or not. So to protect my hand, if he does have the king of hearts, I eventually decide to lead on this flop for $325. Now let's see what he does. Sick girl. Yeah. Sick girl. Yeah. Worst fucking flop ever, man. Nice hand, nice hand. Damn, so he didn't have the king of hearts after all. So I basically had him drawing dead. Hell, if I knew that, I would have bet smaller or maybe even checked it over to him. But obviously, that's a part of poker. Sometimes we may have an idea of what our opponents may have, but most of the time, we don't know the exact two cards. It was still a decent sized pot to take down though. Well, I stayed an hour or so after that hand, but nothing really exciting happened. So let's cash out and go outside and see how we did. Good night, everyone. Eighteen seventy five. Oh, I had a thumbnail. Hold on. It's, uh, hopefully I still got it. I should have it. Wow. Right down the green one. Thanks, bro. I'm sorry. 
All right, so that's a wrap. We were in for 2K. I know y'all didn't even know I was in for 2K, but it was one of those nights. We were in for $2,000. We were out for $18.75. So that is a loss of this amount. Tonight was brutal. When I tell you guys, I can't remember the last time I won money at the hangar. Like, sometimes I think I'm in a downswing, but then I go somewhere else and I run it up. Speaking of going somewhere else and running it up, I had a session the very next day that I didn't record, but I redid this outro because on this outro, I was clearly beyond exhausted. So let's fast forward 24 hours when I redid this outro from outside of spades. Okay guys, so here we are 24 hours later. The last outro I did was at 3 a.m. yesterday. We are, it is 3.03 today. I just cashed out of spades. And as you guys saw yesterday, I was in for $2,000. I was out for $18.75, so I lost $125. Today, I was in for $500. I was out for $3,106. That is a profit of this amount, which is over $2,500 in less than four hours. Guys, today I couldn't miss a thing, but this, this outro is not about today. This outro is about yesterday because I feel like I was too tired yesterday to do a proper outro, and it was a lot of things I missed about yesterday's session. Yesterday, not only did I run, I didn't say, I'm not gonna say I ran terrible, but I ran kind of bad. But my bet sizing was also off. Like my playing was off. I was off yesterday. I, I did not play to my full potential yesterday. And I think it's because of my environment. When I played the hangar, I just grew up at the hangar and I just, it's just like you ever get around your, you know, when you was a kid, you get around your friends and you just act up more because you're around your friends. I think when I played the hangar, I just play bad. Like I play worse. Like I've also been running terrible at the hangar lately. I haven't, like, it breaks my heart. The, the hangar ain't been showing me no love, man. It breaks my heart, man. I might have to title this video The End of the Hangar, which obviously I'm never going to stop playing at the hangar. But anytime I play anywhere else, I can't miss. I go to the hangar, I can't hit shit. I haven't won at the hangar in I don't know how many sessions. But yeah, like yesterday, I lost 125. Today, I won damn near 3K in less than four hours. But yeah, I don't feel like yesterday's outro was the proper outro. So I'm doing a proper outro. Again, I'm going to go home and edit yesterday's vlog because I didn't even vlog today, guys. Like all of that, like I did a little bit with my with my glasses and stuff, but, and, and that's on my story. So follow me on Instagram if you want to see my like daily sessions. But other than that, I didn't even vlog today. So I'm going to edit my break even session from yesterday. And uh, my next vlog will be from 101 Poker Room. But by the time this comes out, I didn't probably already played that session too. Hopefully I see some of you guys there. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. If you, especially if you made it this far, I love y'all. Thank you. Until the next time, take care. Sierra Victoria. Yeah!